Hi, I'm Kevin Dunnan and you're watching Hip World Gourmet. Good morning. You are actually found me in one of the treasures of Dumbrody. I'm here selecting a dry red wine to go in one of the recipes we're going to cook today in our kitchen, which is poached pears. So let me just see here. This is perfect. Let's go and cook up a storm. So today, we're actually, what we're actually going to do, we're actually going to turn Irish food on its head. We're going to give you some funky, sexy food. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a smoked salmon gatto. You say gatto and it's a starter. Yes, it looks like a cake, but it actually is savoury. You know the way at Christmas time you might have smoked salmon as a starter and you're always looking for something different, it's always the same. This, this is giving you an interesting twist to how you can work with, with smoked salmon. We're going to layer smoked salmon, some pancakes, some cream cheese, build it up, we're going to serve it with some stunning organic salad, dress it with some mustard green dressing and you're going to love it. Then we're going to follow, follow by taking an amazing, fantastic, stunning cheese called Abbey Blue Cheese. It's very similar on the lines of a Gordonzola cheese, which is made down in, down in West Cork. And we're going to serve that, or marry that with some poached pears in some red wine, serve it on a crispy, thin, uh, crispy base like a pizza. We're going to bake it in the oven. We're going to serve it with some semi sun dried tomatoes and pesto, and then you're going to try it. Then we're going to finish off with a traditional Irish brown bread, which is a soda bread, but we're not going to use the bread. We're going to use the bread to make a caramel, caramelized crust to top our ice cream. So it's a brown bread ice cream. Wait till you see. Let's get started with the smoked salmon gatto. So what I've done, I have made some pancakes. I'm going to make this in, in, in an individual uh, portion. But if you were if you're having a party for six or party ten, you can either do six of these or else you can do a larger cake. So basically I'm going to cut that out, make, it, make rings so like a disc. And then we're going to take some smoked salmon. This smoked salmon is smoked locally. It's actually with my own recipe. It's, it's smoked with hick, hickory wood and uh, it's a slow smoke, smoked for about 24 hours. But at the same time, there's no additives put in it at all. It's actually, and you can see it's quite, you can see it's, it's quite oily and, and smell, smells great. So again, we're going to make discs again out of that. Okay, so that's really the start of it. Now you take, you take the ring that, that you were cutting the mold from, and we put, we'll just put that on on a plate. We get some saran wrap or cling film. There you go. Put that in. The reason for that is that it's easier to take out. There's no messing. So you start off the layers with the first layer being a pancake. You just leave that to the side. Now, to make your filling, your, your cream cheese filling, you got some cream cheese. Yeah. Squeeze a lemon. And just chop a few chives to put, put through it as well. And again, I always have that feeling about my food. I always like kind of the natural look about my food. I don't like it too constri constrived. Because the most important thing, as I keep mentioning to you, is your ingredients. And we've got fantastic salmon here. So give that a good, good mix. We're going to add a little bit of cream to that. Some black pepper. And some salt. Not too much because don't forget there's some, the smoked salmon has actually got a, quite a salty flavour to it. So, a spoon of your cream cheese inside. 
then a layer of smoked salmon. And push that down so you're pushing, pushing the cream cheese to the edge of the, the edge of the dish. More cream cheese, pancake. Again, pushing the cream cheese out to the edge. Because don't forget, when you take it out, you want to see the different layers. You want to see the pink of the salmon, the white of the cream cheese, and the yellow of the pancake. Okay, finish off with another layer. Okay, basically that's your smoked salmon gato. Done. So we just pop that into the fridge for about a half, a half an hour or so. So I've got some mustard grain here. This is Docky mustard grain. Docky's from South County Dublin. That's where, actually where my wife is from. So, and it's a, it's a really good, strong mustard. If you don't have mustard, uh, dog, or if you don't have mustard grain, you can always use Dijon mustard. Right. It's very simple. It's just uh, some mustard grain, some olive oil. I'm gonna put a bit. A bit of black pepper in there. A little bit of lemon juice that's left over from the smoked salmon gallop mix. Give that a good stir. You can see it there, it's starting to blend together nicely. We're going to put a, a bouquet of organic greens on here. You don't need very much because it's a um, Smoked salmon is quite a rich, and don't forget it's a starter, so. Look about that. It's only really a, a garnish that you're looking for. Now if you take a piece of your smoked salmon, just do a strip, strip like that. Then if you roll it, Just so like that. You can see it there, look. It just looks like a rose. You just put that to the side. Already that looks that's looking great. There you have smoked salmon gato. I'm just gonna cut that. In half there. There you go. So we're going to dress it with. You just want to drop it around the plate. Don't forget to put some on your. Your lettuce as well. Just going to drizzle a bit of olive oil over top. Just around the plate as well. We're going to finish that off with a black, bit of black pepper. So there you have it smoked salmon gato with a mustard grain dressing, and drizzle with a bit of olive oil over that beautiful organic lettuce. But come with me now, because I want to show you where we get, actually get our eggs. We use free range eggs, and we're going to show you how free range eggs work in a farm situation. So come on, let's go. So you know the way I'm always talking about good raw ingredients. 
Well, here we are today at some free-range hens that are actually producing free-range eggs, which are, to me, the, one of the most fundamental part of good food is your raw ingredients. So, tell us, what's the difference between free-range chickens and eggs versus battery? Because the fact that they're out all the time and yeah. they're eating so much grass and whatever they can pick up in the, in the ground, plus they're on a, a, a pure organic food. But they're out and about and just picking away. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely. So they have yeah. a good life really, don't they? They have, they have great freedom. Great freedom. They freedom. Have. And would they produce eggs every single day? Uh, near enough, near enough. Uh, about out of 500 now at this stage. I'm getting about 300 a day and they're 11 months old. So in another month, great. I will be getting rid of them. So yeah. it's not bad, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not bad. And why is the egg yolk so vibrantly yellow? Is it because of the grass, is it? It is, it is, is it? Yes. It's fantastic. I yes. mean, the difference it makes is stunning. Makes awful difference, yes, it does, Excellent. Definitely. They're friendly, are they? Very, very, really? yeah. Let me have a look. They're pets now at this stage. <laughs> Will they let me pick one up, will they? <laughs> oh, there you go, girl. Oh, they are, they're beautiful, aren't they? They are, they are. They're, Excellent. They're 11 months old now, at this stage. They'll soon be finished here. Can I take this and, home with uh, me? You can, you can, can I? certainly. Listen, thanks very much. Well, I'll well, give you a kiss. Kevin. You're welcome. Thanks, brilliant. Bye bye. <laughs> so there you have it. Free range hens laying free range, range eggs. So let's go back to the kitchen and cook a little bit more. See if that'll fly off. <laughs> All right, cheers. Let's get on and make this fantastic Abbey Blue Cheese pizza with poached pears. Basically what we have here is we've got some poached pears. I poached them in some red wine, some sugar, some cinnamon sticks, and uh, poached them for about about an hour or so. So I'm gonna just slice them down, like so. Just chop them up roughly. <clears throat> okay. Oh, the smell of that is fantastic. There's a fantastic story about Irish farmhouse cheeses. And how it, how it comes about is, and it's not so long, it's not that old. Many many years ago, we used to make some soft cheeses, and then we were told we weren't allowed to make any more soft cheeses by the English, and we had to make hard cheeses. So that was fine. So we obeyed and we did what we were told. Until about ten years ago or twelve years ago, a group a group of farm farmers down down in Cork, cheese makers, were making soft cheeses, and they were absolutely fantastic. But they were actually extremely wild. Because they'd never been taught how to make cheese correctly in terms of the bacteria growth and stuff like that, that their cheese tended to be extremely wild. So because they wanted to go in more commercially with their, with their cheeses, and a few people got together, actually in fact 12 of them got together, and they got in touch with the Cork University, which is down the south of Ireland, and between them all, they came up with a degree in cheese making. So what happened is they, they all went to college, and they learned how to make cheese correctly. But what, what's fantastic about the whole thing is that they learned how to make cheese extremely wild. Then they went into college and they got tamed. But as it transpired, at the end of the day, we get this result of a wild flavors through our cheeses. And that's why they're so good. We're going to um, roll out our pizza dough here. Okay, you want to do this really uh, quite thin, so you want it nice and crispy. Put a little bit of flour in your, in your pan. Bring your pan over to your ingredients then. Just crumble that over top with your pear and your Abbey Blue Cheese. We're going to put a couple of semi sun dried tomatoes.
We're going to throw that in the oven until it's nice and crisp. Okay, let's check and see if this pizza is ready. Wow, the smell on that. It really comes alive. That cheese. When you melt that cheese, it really comes alive. It's, it's, uh, it's taking a whirl of its own. Just lift it off onto the board there. I'm going to dress it with a bit of pesto. I'm just going to drop on some watercrest, which will give it that little bit of peppery, peppery flavor. Black pepper. There you have it. I'm just going to cut a slice out of this because I can't resist it. You can hear that crunch. Mmm. I can't resist. I'm going to have to try a piece of this. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mmm. Mmm. It's absolutely fantastic. We're going to move on now and make the brown bread ice cream. It's a traditional brown bread Irish soda brown bread, which is here. You can see it's full of uh, <coughs> wheat, whole wheat flour, eggs, bread soda, baked in the oven for about an hour, and uh, that's what we would consider a traditional Irish brown bread. This is a new ice cream. It's a completely different way of making ice cream in terms of from the start to the finish. So we'll, we'll get started with the ice cream now. The immature sugar into your pot. And some water. You let that let that boil again to a soft boil at the stage. Like about three slices, three slices of brown bread. Push it out with your with your hands. Good. See there, put it onto a pan. Then with some brown sugar. Sprinkle it over top. And we're gonna grill that now. But, but, and also just move it around there. <laughs> but when, you, when you're grilling it, make sure that you keep an eye on it because uh, if you take your eye off for a second, it might burn. Then you'd be starting all over again. Okay, so we're going to, need to beat up our egg yolks. So we pop our egg yolks into the mixer. Again, put a little bit of hot water in there just to accelerate the process.
leave that for about two or three minutes until it literally doubles in size until it comes to a thick, frothy texture. Okay, that's, that sugar is nearly ready. Let's just check on the eggs. That's ready. They're caramelized nicely there now. Ready to go into our ice cream. So just leave them to the side because you need to leave them off for about 10 minutes just to make sure they're really, really crispy because at the moment the sugar is hot, so it's a little bit soft. So it'll get crispy though. But I have, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, show you some, some caramel um, garnishes that we, that we can use. Completely up to yourself whether you wanna attempt this or not. We'll try these and see if they work out for us. We put the caramel, <coughs> it's just caramel sugar, on the stove to heat up a little bit. I'm gonna get a steel here because I wanna make, try and make a spiral of sugar. So you just let it drip down until you get to an even, an even thin strip. Hold the steel in one hand. Just twist it like this. Grab a plate and then just push it off. Looks great, doesn't it? It's actually quite easy to do. And just twist it around and push it off. There you go. We'll top our ice cream off with those. Okay, let's just check you, check the sugar. We want it at a soft ball, so we want the sugar to separate, or to like a tread from the two spoons. You can see the way it's uh, treading between the two spoons there. That's exactly the way you want it. Turn turn the heat off on that. Turn your eggs back on. We're gonna pour, pour this uh, sugar slowly into it. There you have there now. What's actually happening in that process is that the sugar, the heat of the sugar is actually cooking your eggs as long with, along with the oxygen. And this ice cream is fantastic for keeping in your own home freezer because you don't need an ice cream machine because it will stay soft with the sugar contents in it. We're gonna add in some whipped cream into your ice cream. There you have beautiful creamy ice cream. We'll pour, pour that into a bowl. Okay, and then with your brown bread, you can hear you can hear that now. See the way it's really crunchy. Sprinkling them through. Place that in, your, in the freezer. I'm gonna serve the ice cream in a cup just to be a little bit different, but it's actually quite a sexy looking presentation. Again, what we're talking about today is turning Irish food on its head. So we'll just get our garnishes ready. I'm gonna use some strawberries. Garnish the top of it. Now it's up to yourself. You can leave the stem on or take it off. Get our ice cream there. You can see how wonderful it looks. Fresh strawberries, a little bit of whipped cream inside, some fresh mint, and then for you adventurous type out there, you've got your sugar garnish to go on top. There you have Irish food turned on its head. Enjoy.
So there you go, Irish food on, turned on its head. We started off today with a smoked salmon gatto with organic greens and musk grain dressing, followed by that fantastic pizza, Abbey blue cheese and poached pears, drizzled with some pesto and some sun-dried tomatoes. Finished with this brown bread ice cream, topped with the sugar garnish for you, for you adventurous type out there. Thank you for watching Hip World Gourmet. Schlante, till next time.